Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we need to talk about another upcoming tropical cyclone. It has been a while, but we have had many, many storms this season. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I would also highly recommend that you check out our very, very awesome Patreon page. I'm actually going to be releasing our cone forecast for this system a little bit early on our Patreon later today. We release all sorts of exclusive, awesome content there on our Patreon page. Right now, our Patreon page is cheaper than a Starbucks coffee, and I can promise you there's a lot more value there than a coffee and hey look all you got to do is try it out if you don't enjoy it go ahead and cancel but I promise you you're not gonna want to do that once you join all right now for today's comment of the day I want to know how many more named storms do you think we're gonna have this season do you think this one's gonna become a named storm and then do you think there will be none after or what do you think let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video let's get into this video and we're taking a look at that two-day graphical tropical weather outlook here as you can see, we have Epsilon up there uh, to the north. That's a giant storm. As you can see, it really has some uh, outer bands that are just extending well into Canada there, almost reaching New England. So it's a very, very large storm at this point. Uh, a hurricane. It was, a, I believe, a Category 3 at one point. Um, so very major storm there. But what our area of interest is, is actually that one down there in the Caribbean where we have an 80% chance of development within the next two days. And it's going to be generally heading towards the Gulf Coast. We're going to need to watch this one closely. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on here and move on to our five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. We'll first off take a look at our Invest 95L because that's what the Caribbean one is called. Uh, and then we'll take a look at the satellite imagery and then eventually our model guidance. All right, now here we are taking a look at that five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. And as you can see, we have a 90% chance of this one developing over the next five days. So it's almost certainly going to at least be a depression, probably a tropical storm as well. Uh, and then it's kind of a question mark from that point moving forward. Anyway, so we can see that it's generally going to be heading towards either that gap between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba potentially hitting Cuba, and I even think there's a chance it could hit the Yucatan Peninsula. The models have trended at that being possible. Uh, it's really a toss-up at this point. It's really hard to predict when the storm hasn't developed yet because the models haven't really picked up on what it's doing uh, because it hasn't done much yet. So we're going to learn a lot more as this storm develops over the next uh, 48 hours or so. Here's the satellite imagery, and as you can see, again, hasn't really developed. It's mostly just an area of thunderstorms. Once this storm is a lot more organized, those models are going to be able to sample that, and they're going to get a much clearer image of what this one's going to do moving forward. We see that every single time with these storms. All right, now briefly, let's take a look at that cone forecast for Epsilon real quick. And as you can see, it's going to weaken to a tropical storm by 2 a.m. on Sunday, and then... Uh, from there, it's basically downhill for it. It's going to be generally heading um, out into the middle of the North Atlantic, and it's going to just fizzle out. So we have nothing to worry about. That's pretty much been the story with this one since the beginning. Um, it's been kind of a fish storm overall. What we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're actually going to take a look at the spaghetti model guidance for our Invest 95L. Uh, according to all of the models, then the GFS Ensemble model, then the Canadian Ensemble model, and then we'll even take a look at the intensity guidance, our European Ensemble model, all sorts of exciting stuff coming up. All right, now here we are taking a look at that spaghetti model guidance, and as you can see, according to these spaghetti models actually, uh, which is all of our um, major models here, it's really just going to hit Cuba. That seems to be the really big um, popular opinion here. Uh, there is two, it kind of has a fork in the road where you see some of these options kind of take it towards Florida or even the East Coast. That's kind of interesting. Uh, and then some of them actually take it a lot further west and potentially impacting areas like maybe uh, the panhandle of Florida, potentially Mississippi or Alabama, maybe even Louisiana. You'll see on our, on our ensemble models that that's actually the more popular opinion according to them, uh, which is really interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at the GFS ensemble model quickly. And again, this one actually has the Yucatan Peninsula as a potential landing spot before it enters the Gulf, which is completely uh, different than what those other uh, spaghetti models were showing. So you can see it's all over the place. And again, that is due to the fact that it has not developed yet. Once it develops, it's going to really narrow down and we'll have a much clearer view. So that means we're going to need to make more videos coming up on this storm, which is pretty much a given, obviously. Here's our Canadian ensemble model and really this one showing the same thing. A lot of it shows Cuba, but there is a few that show the Yucatan Peninsula there. 
And then it really ranges from hitting uh, Bahamas, Florida, uh, possibly even Louisiana. So tons of options are on the table, and we really do not have a very narrow cone at all as far as what this one's going to do moving forward. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at that Invest 95L model intensity guidance so we can see how intense the models think this one's going to get. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at some model guidance on map. We're going to take a look at the low pressure location. Uh, we're going to take a look at the total winds uh, potential. And then we're going to just close out the video. All right, now here we are taking a look at that intensity guidance. And as you can see, uh, we're actually expecting to have a chance of becoming a tropical storm within the next 24 hours, according to quite a few models. Uh, and then by the time we reach hours 48, it's about 50-50, I would say. About 50% of those models have us at tropical storm status, uh, and about 50% have us kind of just lingering below, uh, probably at tropical depression status, just kind of lingering. Um, this is usually what storms show up like, and usually they actually um, meet in the middle or actually side with the, um, the ones that are on the higher end. Just because of how this year has been, that's how it's been all year with these systems. Uh, but it could be on the lower end, of course, there is that chance. As you can see, there's also one that shows a Category 1 hurricane, and then eventually a Category 2, but that is kind of the, the lone wolf there. Uh, and for now, it seems like it's likely we will have a moderate to stronger tropical storm uh, at maximum. Uh, but really, these storms can outdo these models by so much, and I've seen it time and time again. So I really don't want you guys to underestimate this one. It could become a hurricane, um, but the likelihood remains that I think it'll be a tropical storm. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at our European Ensemble model, low pressure location. What you need to know here is this is the same hour. It's just different um, members of this Ensemble model showing the location. So we're seeing what each of these individual models thinks the low pressure is going to be. It's one low pressure uh, center, just different locations. So I hope that makes sense. Here is last night, and as you can see, there was no low pressure location, but as you can see, by the time I reached this afternoon from the time I'm making this video, about 2 p.m. on Saturday, October 24th, uh, we have a lot of separate locations there, so some of these members are having it start to develop, and then by the time we reach about 8 p.m. Uh, on Monday, so about 72 hours uh, or so from the time I'm making this video, this model run is actually from last night from the time I'm making this video, uh, as you can see, there is a few that show it hitting uh, Yucatan Peninsula, like I said, there's also a few that have it hitting Cuba, but a majority here actually have it going through that sweet spot in between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula, which would be the worst case scenario because the less land interaction, the easier time the storm is going to have uh, remaining a strong or low pressure center, obviously. Eventually, it makes its way into the middle of the Gulf here, as you can see, by about the 8 a.m. hours on um, Wednesday, October 28th here, so about four days from now. Uh, and then finally, uh, they eventually have it hitting Louisiana, actually. So this is kind of the outlier. Again, a lot of the models, have, as we've seen throughout this video, have it much further east than that, potentially Florida or even east of Florida. Uh, so this one's kind of an outlier. The European model is a very good model, and it does have a track record of being good even when it is a lone wolf of the other models kind of si coming back to what the European model is showing. Uh, so I'm fairly confident that this one could be correct. But again, we need to watch it develop and then see what the models are showing because they're going to get a lot more of a clearer view then. So probably within the next 48 hours, we should have a much better idea of what this one's going to do. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on to actually our HWRF model, which is a actual hurricane model. This one has done very good all year with especially the track, but also the intensity. So we're going to take a look at what that one has to say about winds uh, and then we'll close out the video. All right, so here we are taking a look at, this is probably going to be about 2 or 3 a.m. on Sunday, October 25th. So tomorrow morning, very, very, very early. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it's actually quite a strong storm already by this point. We see maximum winds in there, and this is sustained, this is not gust, of 51 miles per hour. So already a pretty strong storm. And uh, actually what we'll see happen by the time we're reaching maybe about uh, 12 or 1 p.m. on Monday, October 26th, it actually hits Cuba, which has been kind of, again, a popular track with this one. Uh, and it's to the north of Cuba by this point with 70 mile per hour winds. So again, pretty strong here, uh, to say the least. Uh, and then eventually, we what we see happen is it moves to Louisiana. So we see this one show kind of that more westerly track. When I see this one and the European model showing this, I actually have quite a bit of confidence. Because these have been the two single most best models 
uh, for Hurricanes this year so far, the European model and the HWRF. So seeing these two kind of show that more westerly track tells me that that's actually uh, a pretty big possibility here. Again, I'm going to be updating this storm a lot coming up because obviously it is going to be probably the biggest weather thing going on for a while now. So I will be updating you guys on this and we will actually see if these two models are going to be right or if the majority uh, of the other models are going to be correct and it's more east. So I can't wait to see what this one shows. Actually, I love situations like this uh, in weather because it's so hard to predict and I love that. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what is the coldest temperature you've ever felt? And Denner Doherty, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, said end of January 2019 got down to negative 62 wind chill in west central Minnesota. Uh, and that just goes to show that the 2018 to 2019 winter was not warm and snowless everywhere because actually we had a lot of cold air in that upper Midwest region, if I remember correctly. Uh, and this is actually a good example of that. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, again, we added so many more names. I'm glad you guys are really loving it. I'm getting tons of interaction with you guys, tons of comments, tons of likes, and even messages. I love messaging with you guys as well on the Patreon page. That's another thing. I love to interact with you guys because it's not so overwhelming because it's not too many, obviously. So I'm able to respond uh, to all of those. That's great, obviously. Uh, now... For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our diamond patrons. This is going to be a mouthful. Alicia Davis, Madbird, Cindy Klein, It's Jay, Kellen Manhart, Mariah Vieira, Dan Hazard, and Mark J. Alongside our platinum patrons, Adam S., Donna Carnes, Dovi, Nagel, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, Larry LaPan, and Cameron Marshall. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you would like to end up on this end screen, you can do so by checking out that very exciting Patreon page where I'm doing so much more work recently. I love doing that because, again, it's a lot more exclusive, so I'm able to interact with a lot of you uh, in ways that I would not be able to normally on the YouTube channel, the Instagram, or the Facebook. So I highly recommend you check that out if you're looking for a more exclusive experience. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.